Lissa Productions. All right. Welcome back to Experimental Physics. Today we begin a series of investigations of the temperature dependence of electrical resistance in solid state materials. So what we'll be working with is Ohm's law, but the way in which this is usually discussed in introductory physics courses completely overlooks a very important assumption. That is that the temperature of the sample has to remain constant. So if the temperature is constant, then we can say that the voltage across the sample is equal to the current passing through it times the resistance, and the resistance is the temperature dependent quantity that we'll be investigating. So in order to make measurements of Ohm's law, what we'll want to do ultimately is to plot the voltage as a function of the current, and the slope of the resulting straight line is the resistance. Uh, we have a circuit that looks like this, a power supply in series with a current limiting ballast resistor that's uh, simply to protect the power supply from blowing a fuse if you turn it up all the way. And the current passes through the sample whose resistance you want to determine and then through a current meter and back to the power supply. So this is the series circuit for measuring the current and we have a voltmeter in parallel across the sample to measure the voltage. So what we will do after having measured the resistance at various temperatures, we'll plot the resistance as a function of the temperature, and depending on the type of material, you'll see very different behaviors. The resistance of a metal, like copper, will increase roughly linearly as a function of temperature over the range of interest. And a semi-metal, like carbon, will actually decrease in resistance as a function of temperature. The physics for these different behaviors is a topic that we'll discuss in detail in class. But the goal of the experiment is to determine how does the resistance of these two different types of materials vary as you change the temperature of the sample. Now, to accomplish this, uh, we'll just wire up a circuit that looks like the one that's drawn here on the board. We have the power supply and the large ballast resistor and a couple of meters for measuring the current and voltage. This container allows you to put the sample in different temperature baths, uh, ice water, hot water, liquid nitrogen, and the ring stand is simply to protect you from uh, accidental spilling. The temperature of the room temperature and ice water and hot water will be measured with the digital thermometer. So we'll just put that in the container along with the sample. These samples are homemade. Uh, the copper sample is just a little coil of copper wire. Uh, resistance at room temperature is about two or three ohms. And the carbon sample is just some little carbon resistors uh, connected together and the resistance of this at room temperature is about two or three ohms. So uh, next we'll take a look at the close-up of the wiring. So we'll begin to wire up the circuit for measuring the uh, resistance of various materials. The basic thing is a power supply and you'll encounter several different designs of power supplies in the laboratory but they all have some common features. A, an on-off switch and a knob for changing the voltage applied to the whole circuit and a couple of terminals for connecting the circuit. Now this may seem silly but uh, believe it or not one of the most common problems with wiring electrical circuits and discovering that it's not working is that the power cord hasn't been plugged into the mains. So check to be sure that the cord is actually plugged in and that the power supply is actually turned on. Uh, but don't do that until after you've finished wiring the circuit. So we'll start with uh, one of these banana cables plugged into the red terminal and then into this large ballast resistor. The purpose of this is simply to limit the current so that you can have the full range of control of the knob on the power supply without worrying about blowing the fuse. So out of the power supply into the ballast resistor, then another wire out of the ballast resistor and into the sample. So one of the samples that you'll use is this little spool of copper wire. You can just plug into one of the connections on the sample and then out of the sample 
and into a meter for measuring the current. So we'll plug the sample current into the 20 amp input on uh, the ammeter and then just be sure that the dial is set to the 20 amp input. And then out of the meter from the common connection on the current meter and finally back to the power supply. So the complete circuit is power supply, ballast resistor, sample resistance, current meter, and then back to the power supply. Then we take the sample and connect this to a voltmeter for measuring the voltage. So a lead into the volts input and another one into the common connection. And we can take these two leads and put them in parallel right across the sample. And then set the voltmeter to a range of two volts DC. So that's the complete circuit for measuring current and voltage. And finally, for measuring the temperature on the sample, we just place the sample into a temperature bath. This is just room temperature, of course, but you'll put ice water or hot water or liquid nitrogen into the container and measure the temperature using a digital thermometer. So we'll just put the temperature probe into the temperature bath along with the sample and measure the temperature. This applies only to room temperature or ice water or hot water. Don't use the thermocouple for the liquid nitrogen. We'll just assume that liquid nitrogen is 77 Kelvin. But that's the complete circuit. Just to review the objective of the experiment, you plot the voltage across the sample as a function of the current passing through the sample. The slope of the resulting straight line is the resistance, assuming that the temperature is held constant. And you do this at various temperatures and then plot the resistance as a function of the temperature and observe the two different behaviors. Uh, metals increase roughly linearly as a function of temperature and semi-metals decrease in resistance versus temperature.